You may have heard that ChatGPT has recently opened up its platform to allow third-party developers to create plugins for it. This is an exciting development because it gives you the opportunity to enhance your experience with ChatGPT by incorporating customized apps that can perform a diverse range of functions. Essentially, ChatGPT transforms into an operating system and plugins become apps that augment its capabilities. In this video, we'll dive deeper into ChatGPT plugins. We'll start by defining what plugins are and the problem they're trying to address. We will also explore the entire plugin architecture and provide insights on the possibilities you'll have with them. And after watching this video, you'll have a comprehensive understanding of ChatGPT plugins, including their functionality and limitations. And before we get started, as always, all the resources that I'm going to be talking about in today's video are going to be available to download from my Patreon page. And you're going to see a link to it in the description below. All right, so here we are looking at OpenAI's announcement of ChatGPT plugins. And this is what they say. We've implemented initial support for plugins in ChatGPT. Plugins are tools designed specifically for language models with safety as a core principle and help ChatGPT access up-to-date information, run computations, or use third-party services. Okay, so if you head over to this page right here they kind of give you more information but essentially uh you can learn how to build a plugin that allows chat gpt to intelligently call your api okay and so they give you some examples like what plugins will be able to do okay so plugins can allow chat gpt to do things like retrieve real-time information so for instance sports scores stock prices latest news retrieve knowledge base information so like company docs personal notes and perform actions on behalf of the user so like booking a flight ordering food things like that and this actually this last one really got me excited because obviously you know these these other ones they open up a lot of opportunity but this last one it really, you know, it really gets your imagination kind of going, okay? They talk about the plugin flow, okay? So they give you basic um, kind of steps that explain how you can build a plugin, okay? Now, the first thing I want to talk about is what is what is the purpose of plugins? Why did they launch that, okay? So in order to understand that, let's take a look at the general, the the G chat GPT flow as it is right now. Okay. So right now today, this is what it is, right? We have a user. He's interacting with the chat GPT UI. Okay. That's the UI where you can, you know, ask a question, get a response. You also have ways of creating more conversations and things like that. And this UI is talking to a chat GPT model, right? It's talking to a, an AI model that essentially is trying to figure out what you're asking and then it's trying to figure out how to get the information that you need, right? Now, the problem with this, this kind of, the, the way it works right now is it's rather limited, right? You can't, uh, you can't get, you know, chat GPT to book a, an airline ticket for you. You can't get it to book a place at a restaurant you can't get it to connect to the internet right so open ai right the um the company behind chat gpt they saw this and they realized that we need to enable all of this functionality that use well first of all users are seeking this functionality and second of all it's going to make their whole platform a lot more um appealing and this gave birth to this uh you know to this idea of having you know third parties uh, users, companies uh, create these plugins, right? So for instance, we will be able to have a plugin for booking, uh, you know, a seat at a restaurant. We will be able to have a plugin that gets weather, a plugin to do hotel booking, and, you know, millions other things that you can do uh, with the internet, right? Everything you're doing with the internet, you will essentially be able to do it uh, using uh, ChatGPT natural language interface, okay? So that's really what they're trying to do. They're trying to have chat GPT go out beyond kind of its, you know, its sandbox, right? It's language models. They're trying to get it like to find out more data, up-to-date data, and also actions, right? Do actions, you know, uh, book a flight ticket, um, you know, maybe call somebody or send somebody a message, right? The, upper, the 
uh, possibilities are, are really, really limitless, okay? Next, I want to talk about the overall architecture, okay? Let's talk about how, you know, how me and you will be able to build plugins and get it to work nicely with ChatGPT. So there's a couple of moving pieces here. The first thing is the plugin architecture, okay? And so here we have a plugin, plugin package, right? And essentially what you're going to do is you're going to build this plugin out, right? And you're going to register it with ChatGPT. And so in a way, you know, when you register, you're kind of, you know, submitting it, uh, submitting it to a ChatGPT app store or ChatGPT plugin store or whatever they're going to call it. And so once you register your plugin with ChatGPT, ChatGPT now knows uh, that this specific plugin exists. It also knows uh, the capabilities of this plugin. It knows what the plugin is meant to do. And most importantly, it has the URLs that it needs to access in order to access your plugin. And we'll talk about all of that in just a minute. And so this is going to be the new flow, right? So now we have chat GPT flow with plugins. Okay. So we have the user here and the user is accessing a UI, which is the case with any kind of app they're using, right? They're going to be talking to a UI. In this case, the UI is chat GPT, right? This is what the UI, they're asking questions. And then the chat GPT returns with an answer. And so what happens is you as a user, you know, you're going to go to some plugin store or like a plugin registry and you're going to activate this plugin. So once you activate it, chat GPT now knows that there is this plugin that it can refer to. It also knows what the plugin does. It, all, it knows the capabilities of this plugin because that is something that you described in a text file when you build this plugin. Okay. Now, as a result, when you are talking to chat GPT, chat GPT may decide at its own discretion to ask something the plugin instead of asking something its own model okay so to speak so instead of talking to its own model right as it's doing right now it knows that this plugin exists and it also knows what this plugin does so for instance maybe this is a weather plugin so if i ask for weather i mean what is the weather in like barcelona spain okay chat gpt cannot you know cannot give me an answer because it, it doesn't have access to the internet it can't figure out it can ask someone in Barcelona, Spain, what's what's the weather over there? And so if I ask something related, ChatGPT is going to check the list of enabled plugins, going to see there's a weather plugin that, you know, so-and-so built, but you as a user activate it, and it's going to decide at its own discretion to ask the plugin for information. And so your plugin has this extra logic in order to figure out some piece of information that ChatGPT cannot do on its own in this case this could be you know finding out weather information okay and so it's gonna go ahead and it's gonna perform this logic and at this stage the plugin will decide how it's able to get this information right this is kind of the logic backend layer as compared to the ui layer here and so your plugin depending on what it's trying to do it may contact another service it may contact you know using an api to get this information or it may perform it internally right maybe it knows the data maybe it has you know some some csv or some data file of information so it doesn't really need to contact the api but the most important thing to understand is this is like a self-contained app here okay so it's an app and the way you're accessing this app is you're accessing using an api so this api this plugin essentially exposes an endpoint in fact it can expose a couple of endpoints uh, ChatGPT recommends like two endpoints to start with, and these are going to be the endpoints that ChatGPT is going to be connecting to in order to communicate with your plugin. Then your plugin can do whatever it wants. It can, you know, connect to an external API. It can do anything that it needs to do in order to get this data. Now, what's interesting here is that if you read the official docs here, the plugin flow, you're going to see that when a user asks a relevant question, the model may choose to invoke an API call from your plugin if it seems relevant. And so it's not a guarantee that just because the user has activated your plugin in their instance, in their ChatGPT instance, that, you know, if they're looking for weather, it's going to be 100% that they're going to, you know, ChatGPT is going to go to your plugin to get this information. It's not a guarantee but chat gpt does know that your plugin exists it knows what your plugin does it knows what kind of data your plugin is going to return 
And so there's a good chance if, you, if the user is looking for something related to what your plugin does, it's going to go to your plugin. And so now that we talked about the architecture, we talked about the flows, let me show you a very, very simple plugin that I built in order for you guys to understand it even better how plugins are going to interact with chat gpt now the important thing you guys need to understand about chat gpt plugins is they need to expose an api okay so it needs to have an api that chat gpt can connect to right when you're building just apps you know they typically do not expose apis like if you're building a flutterflow app um, it doesn't expose an api but there are some ways to get it to expose apis as well so that's the first thing to understand and so knowing that I decided to build a very, very simple plugin using a tool called Make. It used to be called Integromat. And this is a tool that I've used many, many times before on this channel in, in various videos. Very, very powerful tool. In fact, I've been using this tool for many, many years, actually. I really, really like this tool. And no, I'm not sponsored by this tool at all. And so if you head over to make.com and you log in, you're going to be at a page that looks something like this. What you want to do is you want to create a new scenario. I already did that. So if you head over to scenarios, I have this scenario called weather plugin. So if we click here, we're going to open this uh, screen here. And what we want to do here is we want to edit this, this scenario here. So if I click on edit, I'm going to see the scenario. So my plugin here, right, is essentially a flow. And there are two steps. Obviously, when you're building uh, plugins, you're building different things, you may have more steps. This is a very, very simple plugin. And so what we have here is we have a webhook that accepts data. Okay, so you send data from the outside. This thing is going to catch this data and it's going to parse this data. And then we have this step that emits a response. Okay, so we need to respond, right? We can't just get this data and, and do something with it. We still need to respond. And so if we click here, when you create a webhook, you're given this URL. This is key here. Because once you have this URL, you can specify that URL in your plugin file. In fact, I have here a sample plugin file. This is obviously not the official plugin file, but this is kind of what it's going to look like, right? So I have a ChatGPT weather plugin, and then I have various uh, information about this plugin that will be submitted to ChatGPT. And then ChatGPT is going to parse all of it using its AI magic, and it's going to categorize it and kind of, you know, put it in its own catalog, right? That plugin store, the app store, or whatever they're going to call it. And so I have here a name, weather plugin. I'm going to have a logo. Uh, we may need authentication, right? If your plugin is needs authentication, you may need that. Uh, you're going to need plugin description, and then you're going to have your endpoints. So right now, um, ChatGPT recommends like two endpoints just to get started with, right? And so I have one endpoint, right? I don't have another endpoint. And so my endpoint here is this endpoint, right? When I create a webhook, I am given a URL. This is very, very cool because I have here a URL, okay? So what you need to do is once you get this url is you need to send data okay so depending on what you're doing depending on the plugin you have you're gonna make an api call to this url here right and so i'm using a tool uh just a sample tool to send http requests and i have here this uh, url that i got here and i'm sending a request to it right i'm basically mimicking what chat gpt will be doing because chat gpt is going to essentially connect to my URL and send a request. So in this case, I'm sending a request called City Barcelona. This is a JSON request, right? This is just a very the simplest JSON request you're ever going to see. I'm just saying City Barcelona, okay? If we do redetermine a data structure and you send a request, right? You send a request this thing is going to figure out the data structure okay so if you decided this is the data structure you want and you send the request this thing is going to automatically figure out okay so we're going to say okay and this thing sends a response okay so if you click here this is the response i'm just saying you know status is 200 because everything is fine and the response is condition sunny 1025 that is the response here so now if i click here and i run once right for testing right i can execute this again and I'm going to get a response, condition sunny temp 25, okay? And that is my very, very simple chat GPT plugin where you send a city and it always returns regardless of the city you send. Uh, conditions are sunny, uh, temperature is 25. This is 25 Celsius or 75 Fahrenheit, okay? And so this is a very, very simple plugin, but essentially we have all that we need 
all the information that we need to submit to chat gpt as a plugin right we can just fill all this out we have the url and chat gpt will figure out you know what our plugin does it will figure out the data and everything like that and now you know if the user decides to activate this plugin uh when they talk about something weather related or weather in barcelona or weather somewhere else typically it's not going to be just weather in barcelona it's going to be everywhere right anything weather related uh it's automatically going to invoke our plugin with the data that the users sent. Another thing that's really interesting, if you go to uh, their documentation, they specify that currently we will be sending the user's country and state in the plugin conversation header, right? So if you're in California, for example, it would look like this, okay? For further data sources, users will have to opt in via a consent screen, okay? So this is useful for shopping, restaurants, weather, and more, okay? So what's cool about this is that you know, for apps like Weather or any kind of apps where it's important to know the user's current location, uh, it's automatically going to be sending it, right? So with our plugin, right? So if you go to our plugin right here, right, this Weather plugin, uh, the way we're going to be calling this plugin is the City Barcelona. This is going to be sent automatic. Okay, so we don't need to ask the user, uh, you know, to send us the city. It's, it's going to automatically figure out the user's location from their IP address and all that. And it's automatically going to package it and send it. And so essentially our job is really about taking the user's location that we're getting passed from chat GPT and getting uh, weather information back. And, you know, who knows, maybe we're going to have another API call that we need to invoke, or maybe we have all of this information stored uh, in our storage database, right? So it really depends on the plugin that you're going to do. But right now we have a simple plugin that granted it's always going to be returning the same thing but this is enough for the system to recognize it and to invoke it uh you know if it determines that the user is interested in something related to uh weather or anything else that our plugin is capable of doing so a couple of other points that i want to make right so now with chat gpt building their plugin architecture and their plugin infrastructure and all of that what ChatGPT is essentially doing is they're becoming like a mini operating system. So your ChatGPT is essentially a UI. This is your interface into this kind of mini operating system, right? So if you think about like Windows or Mac OS, these are operating systems, but these are UI based operating systems, right? With ChatGPT, you're talking to it, right? It's like an assistant. And so when you're creating plugins, you're essentially building the backend right you're building apps that do something but essentially it's kind of like a back end in an app and so you can make any app out there you can make it plugin compatible with the right conversion you will be able to make it uh ready for plugins and this is something i'm going to be covering in future videos so if you guys want to see more of this kind of content plugins chat gpt making your apps compatible with plugins or how to build plugins using different systems hit a like on this video and leave a comment to let me know if i see a lot of likes on this video i'm going to be making more videos and i'm going to be talking about ways that you can make your flutterflow apps work really really nicely with this chat gpt plugin architecture now if you guys enjoyed this video and you're looking to get more content you're looking to become better with no code better with building chat gpt plugins and just all around a much more proficient developer when it comes to no code apps then you definitely want to check out my patreon community not only will you get access to all the flutterflow apps that i built on this channel and that's going to allow you to quickly and easily to view and or clone any of the apps but you also get access to extra content such as q a's live streams behind the scenes content and my patreon exclusive masterclass series where i do a deep dive on a specific topic that the community votes on in fact i plan on doing another deep dive very very soon maybe this week maybe at the end of this week or maybe early next week and so if you definitely do not want to miss that you definitely should consider becoming a member and you can do so by visiting our patreon community using a link in the description below this video now if you guys want to see more videos having to do with chat gpt ai and all kinds of interesting things make sure you check out the video in the corner of your screen that video is going to help you to better understand how to build your apps 
to work with AI.